it's time for more world building! In this video, we're going to continue making the city of Mirhakos using roll tables from Shattered Arc RPG. Hi everyone, I'm Michael Putlack, and this is yet another world building video. If you haven't seen the previous world building videos yet, there should be a link popping up right over here, and there's also a link down in the description. Don't forget to let me know what you think of these videos in the comments, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of them. Okay, now let's get on to the world building. We've already fleshed out a few districts here in Mirhakos, and next we're going to tackle the slums. In the Shatter Dark rules, you use a d4 to determine how many points of interest there are in each district of the city. You follow that up by rolling a d6 to determine what those points of interest are, depending on what district you're rolling on. So I rolled a 1 for the number of points of interest here in the slums, and then on the slums points of interest table, I rolled a 2, which means there's a poor tavern here. I've said this before, but I do think that taverns might be my favorite thing to roll up. They're a ton of fun. I rolled on the tavern generator and got a 7, 17, and 13, so we know that this tavern is the boar and the shield, and that they're known for their pit fighting. I then roll on the food and drinks table. On the drinks table, I rolled a 2 and a 5, so we know that the boar and shield is known for its watered down swill and its clear spirits. Then on the food table, I rolled a 12, 5, and 8, so we know that they're known for their rat on a stick, yuck, cheese and bread, and mushroom kebab. Those last two sound pretty good. As you might know, I like to roll up an NPC for each location as well. I generally roll on the NPC generation table as well as the name table at the same time. So I rolled a 9, so that I know that they're a halfling, a 5, so I know that that halfling's name is Daisy, and a 7, 4, and a 3, so we know that Daisy is elderly, neutral, and has a standard amount of wealth. Next up, it's rolling on the NPC qualities table, where I rolled a 2, 2, 6, and 15. So we know that Daisy has a stocky build, likes to write in her diary, and has been cast out from a wealthy family. Well, she would have been cast out from a wealthy family if I had read this chart right, but I didn't. So actually, we know that she's going to be able to smell lies, which I actually think is a lot more fun. Especially because I think we've already rolled up a few characters who have been cast out from wealthy families, so it's fun to mix it up a bit. And I actually am really excited to find out what this means for any adventures that come knocking. I think it's actually a pretty powerful ability for this NPC to be able to smell lies. And I should say now that if you're wondering where all of these world building videos are eventually going, the plan is to actually start a solo Shadow Dark campaign where I'm playing through some of the places that we're building as part of these world building videos. If you haven't seen the video yet where I rolled up these characters to play solo with, you can find the link right up there. See? There it is. I'm really excited to get to that point, and I know it's just a few videos away. And remember, if you think that sounds cool and want to see more videos like that one too, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Next up is the market. Now, when I rolled up for which kind of districts would be in the city of Mirhakos, the market was the highest number that I rolled. So, in addition to whatever I'm going to roll on this d4 for points of interest, there's going to be one additional point of interest, and that is the location of the seat of the government within the city. I rolled another d4 and got a 1 for points of interests, and then I rolled on the market district table and got a 6, so we know that this market has an illicit black market within it. As for what they sell in this black market, I don't think we have to define that quite yet. When adventurers make it to this point, I'm sure one of them will have something illicit that they're looking for, whether that's a spell or an item, or even just another item that's hard to find or has to be smuggled in. Maybe the market will stock that, and you can go ahead and throw your player a bone. Or you could do something fun like, well, let's say that one of your players is looking for a magical battle axe. This market could have a plus one magical battle axe, but the reason why it's illicit is because it's actually also cursed. I think it's super fun when you can take regular or mundane objects like a battle axe and put an unexpected twist on it. As for the NPC who is either at or runs the market, I rolled two fives, a two, and a pair of sixes. So we know that this NPC is Isolden the Elf, who is an adolescent, is chaotic, and who is also extravagantly wealthy. I think Isolden is extravagantly extravagantly wealthy because he's in league with the group of bad guys who have taken over this city and as you probably know from previous videos are even expanding their foothold into the region by attacking the village of Treefell. More on these villains a little bit later. Another option for Isildin might be to have him run an illicit black market of things that these villains have outlawed. So things that are hard to find like medicine or food or things like that that the bad guys don't really want the people to have. However, I think this might be a little bit too 
too close to the character of Kresh, the half-orc freedom fighter who's running the criminal safe house in the northern low district of Mirkahos. So I think I'm going to stick with my first instinct here and make it so that Isildin is kind of leaning towards being a bad guy, and I think that also goes in better with their alignment, which is chaotic. By the way, if you're having a hard time keeping all of these characters straight, well, first off, join the club, because it's tough for me too. But also, I am putting links down in the description where I have this world written up, and you can take it and use it at your home table if you want. It's totally free. It's just a Google Doc. You can check it out down there in the links below. To wrap up Isildin, I rolled on the NPC's characteristics table. I rolled an 11, 19, and 16. So we know that they are sweaty, swaggers, and are in love with a bartender. Let's just make that Daisy since we just rolled her up anyways. And we know that they work close together. So Daisy is elderly, and Isildin is an adolescent. So I think that hearing him pine for her, or to see Daisy turn him down, would be a really fun storytelling moment for the group. Or you can look at it this way, I think halflings probably age at about the same rate as humans, but since elves are so long-lived that even though Daisy the halfling is elderly, this adolescent elf in Isildin might only be like 75 or 80 years old, which for an elf is adolescent, but really might be pretty close in age to Daisy the halfling. I don't know, we'll figure something out. The last point of interest in the market is what I'm calling the seat of power. I imagine it being some sort of a government building, but it's been overrun by that group of bad guys who have taken over the city. So I think the seat of power would be the government buildings where the city was really run from before being taken over by this villainous group. However, I don't think this is where the seat of power for the villains themselves are. I think they probably have a hideout or a lair somewhere else where they're pulling strings from. I actually have a pretty good idea of what I think that's going to be, and I'm really excited for it. So I hope you tune into the next few videos too when that's going to come to light. So speaking of those villains, I think it's time that we learn a little bit more about them. This time around, I actually turned away from the Shattered Ark Core rules to another book that is pretty fabled in the design community, The Tome of Adventure Design by Matt Finch at Mythmere Games. So I bought this book a while ago, and of course, if you want to find more information about it, there's a link below for that too, but I've never used it for anything other than flipping through the pages and just admiring all of of these roll tables upon roll tables upon roll tables. This book is just an assembly of awesome roll tables to randomize anything that you want to in your world. I don't think I would recommend using it at the table like you might with the Shattered Ark RPG rules, but if you're planning something in advance, I think this is an excellent resource. So when I wanted to come up with a little bit more story for the villains in the area, I figured this tome would be the place to go for it. I started by rolling on the Master Villainous Plan table and got a 73. So we know that this group is looking for political power of some type. How are they going to do that? Well, I rolled on the method of gaining political power table, and again, this has a hundred distinct options for how a villain might be looking to gain political power. And I rolled a 57. So I know that they kidnapped the family of their rival. Okay, so I know this is something that I've spoken about in these videos before, but I really just love how randomness can spark your imagination in ways that it otherwise just could not be sparked. I was thinking that the city of Mirkahos was going to have a proper elected government. However, I think I'm going to switch gears a little bit because of the randomness introduced from this table. Now I'm thinking, instead of there having been an elected government in Mirkahos, there was actually a really well-liked lord that oversaw it all. Well, he was well-liked until about a year ago when he started acting kind of strange and no one has seen his family since then either. It's because they've all been kidnapped and the band of villains has them under their control and is threatening to kill them unless this lord does their bidding. So, although the Lord is still technically in power, he's having his strings pulled like a puppet by these villains. Now that sounds like an adventure that's really coming together, if you ask me. Since I was originally thinking that the seat of power would just have a few government buildings, now that we know that a Lord was ruling the city, I'm going to change that instead to being a modest palace. And since we haven't rolled up any NPCs for that palace yet, we might as well roll one up for this Lord. I rolled a 9, 4, 3, 2, and 5. So we know that this Lord is a halfling named Percy, is an adult, is lawful, and is wealthy. I kind of like that Lord Percy is wealthy, but not extravagantly so, because it makes me feel like he really was a good ruler of the city, and it explains why this palace is modest and not extravagant or opulent. Oop, and I, I forgot to write down halfling here, so I better take care of that. As for Lord Percy's qualities, I rolled a 14 and a pair of eights. This means that he has big eyebrows, slaps back, 
Max and has a false identity. Okay, that last one is pretty cool for a lord. However, I think having a false identity kind of implies that they somehow, in their role as a lord, are pretending to be something that they aren't. But I want to take it one step further and instead say that they have a secret identity. So to me, the difference is that a secret identity is that they, they really are the lord, but they might step out and disguise themselves as someone else outside of the palace. This is like the difference between Bruce Wayne being Batman and Princess Jasmine pretending to be a commoner if that makes sense. I think this could end up being a really big surprise for the adventuring party if they ever come across the Lord in a different setting and it's revealed who he really is. I don't think I want to actually figure out what that secret identity is quite yet because I am going to solo this city myself and I want to leave a few surprises for myself to uncover. Is that weird? Maybe it's a little weird, but I think it just sounds more fun. If you have any ideas of what the secret identity of Lord Percy should be, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know where your mind's going with this and what you're thinking. So we've really made some progress building out the city of Mirkos. Hooray for incrementalism! I know that people have been asking for more world building videos, and frankly, it is a little bit crazy to me that I'm doing something on the internet that people are asking for more of, so thanks for asking, because it feels really good. But because of that, my goal starting this month is to be releasing two world building videos a month. So even though they are pretty time consuming, I hope that I'm going to be able to stick to that. The last district that we have to flesh out in the city is the Southern Low District. And after that, I think the stage will be set for my adventuring party to go exploring the city to see what they find. And maybe even take down some of these villains that we're talking about. And like I said before, I'm going to run that solo using Shatterdark. So if you're a fan of either running RPGs solo or are just interested in learning more about it, or you're a fan of Shatterdark, I think that you're going to really like those videos. So please make sure to subscribe. Down in the video description, you can also find a link to that Google Doc I was telling you about that has all the information on this city and the region that we've built so far. You can also find a link to my itch page where I just released a stat block for a vampire dragon for Shatterdark. Here's the cool artwork I commissioned for it. Seriously, this guy is really badass and I'm really looking forward to dropping him into a game pretty soon. You can also sign up for my newsletter and if you do do that, I'll send you some free dragon turtle lore as thanks. And of course, follow me on Instagram for more D&D &D and Chatter Dark stuff. Until our next adventure, stay inspired and keep those dice rolling. Thanks for watching.